What's up guys, the January Patreon rewards are now available. Mana Drain, Edgar Markov, and Korvold Fae Cursed King are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves or clicking the link in the description. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we're opening up for the first time on this series a pack of Theros Beyond Death. So uh, this is obviously the most newly released set. It's technically not even out yet. It's only out if you've pre-ordered, which hey we did. So uh, we are going to open this pack. We're going to do our best to figure out what our first round draft pick would be. Uh, obviously there's a lot of learning to do with this set. It's brand new. It's not even officially out yet. Uh, so just keep that in mind as we go through. I do know some of the draft archetypes. A lot of the gold cards are flagship cards for this set. Uh, and so they kind of give you a theme. Uh, lots of enchantments, things like that, that we're going to need to keep in mind as we go through. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll get a, f a good idea of what to look for uh, when we are drafting here. Um, I'm going to do a quick little thing because uh, rares are first. So we're going to try and avoid that uh, just so we can uh, hopefully get a good idea of what we want uh, throughout the whole pack. So, okay, first card here, Rise to Glory. Uh a perfect example of a flagship card. So it is three, a white, and a black for a sorcery. Uh, choose one or both. Uh, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, or uh, return target aura card from the graveyard to your battlefield. Uh, auras are obviously enchantments that affect creatures or that are put on creatures. Uh, there are quite a lot of those in this set. Uh, and creatures, obviously, they're always going to be there. So there's a lot of like really, really good targets for this card. This is a huge, huge value card for the recursion kind of deck, uh, which in this case is the white and black deck. Um, it's a great way to kind of bring back a lot of stuff over and over again make your opponents have that answer over and over again all really really good stuff uh this is a good way to keep that engine going so this is actually a really really good uh open uh and potentially a very solid first pick we'll see of course what the rest of the pack holds uh well and speaking of other flagship cards so uh siona captain of the pileas i hope i'm saying that correctly uh is a 2-2 two -two for one a green and a white a uh, legendary creature, so you can only have one out on the battlefield at a time. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top seven cards of your library. Uh, you can reveal an aura card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in, in, a, in a random order. Excuse me. Uh, when an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Uh, so this is actually, in my opinion, a better pick than Rise to Glory, uh, for a number of reasons. So Rise to Glory, obviously great at recursion and everything like that. Siona is not only a creature, which seems to be a little bit more important, uh, in a limited format where nine times out of 10, you're going to win just on board. Um, it also creates more creatures. Uh, she also kind of spits those out, which is great. Uh, and it helps you dig for more, uh, auras to attach to these creatures to make more creatures. So like... There's a lot of really, really good stuff uh, that I think would go along with this. You're, you should be able to get quite a lot of value off of her as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, not only that, but <coughs> there are blink effects in white. Uh, in particular, there's one that comes to mind, but I know that there are a number of them uh, that can blink the card. And then hopefully you can get kind of repeated recursion off of the, just this one card. Uh, so out of these two, I think I would go Siona. Uh, over Rise to Glory, but both are actually very solid picks and flagships, which is kind of nice. Uh, the Binding of the Titans is our last uncommon. It's one and a green uh, for an enchantment saga. Uh, each uh, On the first turn, each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Uh, on the second, exile up to two target cards from graveyards. For each creature exiled this way, you do gain one life. And then on the third, return target creature or land from the graveyard to your hand. Um, this helps do a number of things. So the escape mechanic is a really big mechanic in this set. Uh, in particular, in like the green-black world, it's very big. Red also gets a good bit of it as well. Uh, but the the green in particular really helps you fill your graveyard uh, in, in tandem with black. Uh, this is one of those really, really good enablers for that deck. This allows you to put a bunch of cards into the graveyard, hopefully also get rid of some, some threats on the opponent's side through their deck. Uh, and then you gain a little bit of life, and then hopefully you get to return something back. 
Uh, ideally, you're getting a lot more value off of it than what's on the face of this card because hopefully you mill a few escape cards. Uh, in limited, a little bit less reliable uh, solely because you're entirely based on the picks that you have. Uh, so while this is a very strong card, I would argue probably don't first pick this. I think my suggestion at least would be if you find yourself in that deck, uh, this is a very strong pick. But I think I would rather have Siona above it just because Siona on her own enables so many things. Uh, this has to be put with other cards and things like that, of course, uh, to be truly, truly good. Siona does need auras to be good, but again, that's a very easy thing to get. Uh, Traveler's Amulet. Uh, as an artifact for one mana of any color, pay one, sacrifice it, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Very straightforward card, a uh, nice reprint actually in this set, and a fantastic card just in general. Uh, this is going to go into any deck. Uh, what makes it great is if you find yourself in multiple colors, this helps fix you. Uh, if you don't find yourself in multiple colors, this is still very much a playable card because you're still pulling lands out of your deck, which just means you're deck thinning. Uh, deck thinning is always welcome. Certainly happy to have this card. Not over Siona, of course, but definitely a strong pick. Uh, Portent of Betrayal uh, is a sorcery for three and a red. Gain control of target creature until the end of the turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until the end of the turn and then scry one. This is a very classic act of treason effect. Uh, very, very good in the red black deck, which is very much sacrifice based. Uh, in fact, the flagship card for that deck is very sacrifice based, but uh, the idea there is that you can steal the creature, hopefully swing in with it, uh, and then scry one and then obviously sacrifice it at the second main phase uh, or the end of the turn, wherever it seems fitting. Uh, this is a very good card in that deck, but unfortunately, probably not in most other decks. Uh, the only other place I could really see it is in a hyper aggressive deck uh, where this kind of does double duty, where it gets a blocker out of the way and hopefully also gives you a little more power to swing in with. Uh, that is like kind of just the base value. Uh, and I don't love it just for that base value, but I could see it maybe working in a hyper aggressive deck. I definitely don't think this is the pick here though. Uh, Nyxborn Colossus is a 6-7 enchantment creature, uh, vanilla creature, for 3 and 3 green. Uh, green is a pretty powerful color in this set, I think. Uh, this does a lot of things. One, it does count as an enchantment, which is important. Uh, two, it adds a lot of devotion. Uh, three green devotion. If you don't know what that mechanic is, it's essentially counting up all of the mana symbols of a particular color on your side of the field. Uh, in this case, this has three green mana symbols on it, so your devotion on this card is three. Uh, so it does add quite a lot of that, uh, and it is just a 6-7, like it's just a solid body. Um, I think you find you would pick this if you find yourself in a green devotion deck, but I also think you could probably just pick this as like a solid green beater at the end of the game. Uh, I don't think it's amazing, uh, does not have any abilities obviously, but it can trigger things like constellation, add to the devotion, do a lot of different things. So I do think this is an okay card, but I don't think it's the pick here for sure. We've got such a strong pick in Siona already. <laughs> Uh, Dreadful Apathy uh, is two and a white for an enchantment aura. Uh, enchant creature, the enchanted creature cannot attack or block, and then you can pay two and a white and exile the enchanted creature. Uh, what's really great about this is it goes, again, very, very well with that rise to glory that we've already seen uh, at the beginning of the pack because... You can essentially tag this onto a creature. If you find yourself really wanting to bring it back for tagging it onto another creature or something like that, you exile that creature and then you in tandem with something like Rise to Glory where you get that recursion really, really easily. Uh, this is a super, super good card to bring back because then you can tag another creature with it. Uh, this is a decent removal spell. It's not a pseudo removal spell. Uh, it can, I guess, technically become one if you exile it. Uh, but... I don't think uh, here I would take it. Again, it's a very strong card. I would actually play it with Siona uh, for sure, just because this is a very good card. Siona is just such a strong pick uh, off the face that it's very difficult to, to compete with that. But Dreadful Apathy, very strong card for sure. Uh, Deny the Divine uh, is an instant for two and a blue. Counter target creature or enchantment spell. Uh, if that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Very simply, a very solid counter spell. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say here. It's your classic three mana counter. Uh, it does only hit creatures or enchantments. 
thankfully that's like 90% of the set, so it's fine. Uh, now, obviously, you know, instant sorceries you're going to have a hard time dealing with, but in limited, you're probably going to be dealing mostly with creatures anyway. This is just going to make it easier for you to uh, to deal with them without them even hitting the board, which is great. Uh, I, again, I don't think it beats Siona, but uh, I do think if you find yourself in like a blue-black kind of style control deck, uh, or even a blue-white style control deck, this is a very solid pick for that deck. Uh, Revoke Existence is a sorcery for one and a white. Exile target artifact or enchantment. Uh, the key thing, thing here is exile target enchantment. Uh, artifacts, of course, are going to be there occasionally, but so many things are enchantments. This does hit like the Nyxborn Colossus, the 6-7 that we just saw. At sorcery speed, not amazing, but for two mana, you're dealing with that, and it's exiled. That is huge. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Normally cards like this where they hit uh, artifacts or enchantments are like, eh, not great. Uh, you sideboard them in most of the time. This you can easily, easily mainboard. Uh, in fact, I would argue that this is a very, very solid removal spell uh, just overall in this this uh, set. So uh, again, tough to deal with Siona, uh, uh, take something above Siona, but I do think that this is a very, very solid card and Probably if I am taking Siona, this isn't going to wield, but that's okay. I uh, do think it's a very powerful one. Uh, Omen of the Hunt is two and a green for an enchantment. Uh, it does have flash, uh, so you can play it at instant speed. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you can search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. Uh, and then you can also pay two and a green, sacrifice it, and then scry two. Uh, there's a full, uh, cycle of monocolored omens in this set. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to think of one that I wouldn't play. Uh, they're all pretty good, uh, I would argue. They're, they're all enchantments, they all help with devotion, uh, they all trigger constellation, and they all do pretty relevant things in limited. Uh, this obviously ramps you a little bit, hopefully fixes you if you need a second color, uh, and then also just smooths out your draws, uh, at some point in the game when you find the time to use it. <clears throat> honestly because there's so much value for the enchantments just sitting on the field anyway uh you're not in a rush to sacrifice it and get that scry value unless you just really need it uh but it's nice to have so there's a lot of upside to a card like this absolutely would take it uh if we didn't have siona <laughs> uh grim physician uh, is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. When it dies, target creature and opponent controls gets minus 1, minus 1 until the end of the turn. Uh, I don't know how great this card is, if I'm honest. Uh, first of all, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1. Perfectly fine stats. Not amazing, but whatever. Uh, when it dies, it does have that upside of giving something, you know, a negative 1, negative 1 counter. Hopefully, you can utilize that to deal with something a little bit bigger during combat, maybe, or something like that. It does mean it's probably going to always be able to trade up a little bit. Uh, so if you block a 2-2 two -two with it, for instance, you can uh, tag that with a negative one, negative one after it, and it dies, which is great. Uh, it does allow you to do that. I also think this works very, very well, of course, in the sacrifice deck, uh, if you find yourself there. But I don't think it's worth first picking for sure. It's not that strong. Uh, and I do think, you know, you really kind of have to be in that deck to utilize it to its fullest potential. Uh, that being said, probably a perfectly fine one drop, one that I'd probably play if I was in that color. Uh, Scavenging Harpy uh, is a 2-1 for 2 and a black. It does have flying, and when it enters the battlefield, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Um, I am very underwhelmed with this card. I think it's okay, uh, surprisingly, because there is that big, strong recursion factor, uh, but it really depends on the deck you're in. Uh, there's a lot of decks that don't really care about that. What I will say is this does a great job of dealing with escape. Uh, and again, it's going to be very dependent on the matchup, so you don't necessarily know that you're going to have a deck that has any escape in it, but uh, it does give you a, a kind of main deckable out to that. Uh, don't think it's worth first picking ever, but I do think that, you know, a 2-1 flyer for three, not amazing. It hopefully will get in for a couple swings, uh, but really the, the value of this is being able to hopefully tag an escape card or a really good recursion target. Uh, don't know how likely that is uh, all the time, but it is a nice little card for that. <clears throat> uh plummet very classic card instant for one and a green destroy target creature with flying uh very simple love the instant speed uh two mana is great and the fact that it's in green is pretty awesome because normally they do not get much removal uh i don't think this is like a super premium removal spell in this set there is a, no a large number of flyers for sure blue white flyers 100 still a thing uh, but I think this is still more of a sideboard card. I think maybe you could main deck one of them. 
uh, but you're going to be hard pressed in certain decks to really find a good target for it. So just keep that in mind. Definitely not a first pickable card, but it's an okay removal spell. We have our nightmare token here. We have our beautiful uh, swamp energy. Um, and then our rare is Eidolon of Obstruction. Uh, one and a white for a 2-1 with first strike. It is an enchantment creature, things to keep in mind. Uh, loyalty abilities of your opponent's uh, control cost one more to activate. I'll be honest, this is not a high priority card for me. Uh, I think Siona is a better pick, uh, solely because it does more. Uh, it pumps, pumps out just a bunch of 1-1s, one which is great, uh, and it helps you dig for more, hopefully, powerful enchantments. Uh, this is actually a very good 2-drop just in general. Uh, it is a 2-1 two, for 2 with first strike. Uh, that just means that toughness probably doesn't matter as much, and hopefully it's going to trade with a lot more uh, on the field. And the loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers thing may come in handy, but unfortunately that's not very common. There are three Planeswalkers in this set, uh, and to be honest, like they're not... I'm going to say they're not game-breaking Planeswalkers. Uh, obviously, in limited, Planeswalkers are at a premium, and you should probably always take them just because they are strong in this set. Uh, but they're not going to just outright win the game. They are very strong. Do not get me wrong. Uh, and this does help kind of obstruct that a little bit, uh, keyword. Uh, but I don't think that this is as good of a strong uh, first pick as Siona. I think I would definitely take Siona here. Uh, please feel free, of course, with this new set coming out. There's a lot to learn here. Uh, so feel free, of course, to let me know in the comment section what you guys would take. Happy to have that conversation. But if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.